Hello and welcome. Today we're doing another question from LeetCode75. It's a playlist that's really useful if you are interview prepping and I have it linked down below if you do want to follow along. So what is this question? It's called max number of k sum of pairs and you are given an integer array nums and an integer k. In one operation you can pick two numbers from the array whose sum equals k and remove them from the array. Return the maximum number of operations you can perform on the array. Example one, k is five and we have one, two, three, and four. We want to pair up all numbers that sum up to five and remove them from the array. So we have one and four that we can pair up. So that's one pair and two and three. So that is our second pair. So our output is going to be two. And example two, we have three, one, three, four, three, and k is six. We want to pair up all numbers that sum up to six. So we have one three here and one three we can use as one pair. We do have to remove it from the array, which means we can't reuse those numbers. And we're going to be left with one, four, and three. Now with these numbers, we can't really pair up anything to sum up to six. So our only pair was the three, three, and our output is one. So we want to solve max number of k sum pairs. This question is actually pretty simple and straightforward. We know we want to make pairs that sum up to k. And once we make a pair, we don't want to reuse any of those numbers again. So what if we just kept track of all the numbers we've seen? So say I have example two again. I have nums being three, one, three, four, three, and k is six. What I'm gonna do is in a dictionary, just store all the numbers I've seen and their corresponding counts. So I have d over here and I come across a three first. I'm gonna see if a k minus three exists in my dictionary. If so, I'm gonna pair it up with this three that I am on. Now, nothing is in our dictionary, so of course k minus three is not gonna be in there, which means I'm just gonna go ahead and add in my own number to be used for a future number. So right now we've seen one three in our input nums. Next, I come across this one over here. Again, I'm gonna make the same check. K minus one is five in our dictionary, it isn't. So instead I'm just gonna add my own element to the dictionary and increase that count by one. Now, our current count for one is zero, so our new count is going to be one. We've seen one, one, and one, three so far. Now I come across this three, k minus three is three, and it is in my dictionary. So what I'm gonna do if I find k minus my own number in the dictionary is add one to the number of pairs. We can now make a pair that sums up to k. So right now pairs is going to equal one. We were able to make one pair, and I'm gonna decrease the count of the number I'm using. Since I am making a pair with this number, it's no longer available for any other number to use. So I'm gonna remove this, it's now at zero. And I go to my next number, it's a four. Is k minus four is two in our dictionary? It's not, so I go ahead and add four in. We've seen one four, and the reason we're adding in numbers is if we come across a number in the future that can use our own number to pair it up, we want to make sure that we show we've seen it and it's available to use. Now we come across a three over here, and we wanna check is k minus three in our dictionary? we see that its value is zero. We haven't had any threes to pair up with our own three because the previous threes were already paired up and removed. So what we do is just add one more to our three. So we've seen one three again at this point. Now, since we are done going through nums, we finished everything that we could pair up with and we know we're only left with one pair that we have. So that is how we are going to solve this question. Now let's go ahead and code this up and then do a complete walkthrough with an example. Okay, right, so now we know our logic, we just need to go ahead and code it up. So what I'm gonna do is from collections, import a default dictionary. Now a default dictionary is different from a regular dictionary in that it already implicitly defines a value for any key that we want. So instead of checking if a key exists in our dictionary and then increasing that count by one, we can just do plus equals one directly. And you're gonna see that in a little bit as we code it up. But a default dictionary just reduces the number of lines of code that we need. It does a lot of the functions implicitly for us. So I'm gonna define D to be our default dictionary of integers. So by default, all the values are gonna get zero to start off with because this is an integer default dictionary. So now we want to loop through our input nums. So for number in nums, what do we want to do? We want to see if K minus our number is in the dictionary and has a value greater than zero. So if D of K minus number is greater than zero, we know we can make a pair. So we're gonna increase the count of pairs by one. Pairs plus equals one. And we also want to initialize pairs to be zero before we do that. Okay, so we've initialized our pair, we've incremented that count for pair, but we also want to remove that number we are pairing up with. So D of K minus num is going to be minus equals one. Since we are pairing it, we want to remove it. So no other element can use it again as a pair. 
Now, if that's not the case, if d of k minus num is not greater than zero, it means we haven't found a pair and we want to add our own number to our dictionary. So else what we're going to do is d of num is going to be plus equals one. And again, this is a default dictionary, so we don't need to define it first and then increment that count if it doesn't already exist. By default, it is going to be there. And in the end, all we have to do is just return our pairs. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now we're going to do a super quick walkthrough with an example, just so we can go through our code line by line, visualize it and really see it all come together. For our code walkthrough, we're going to be using example one. So we have one, two, three, four as input nums and K being five. So going through this line by line, the first thing we do is define our default dictionary and then initialize pairs to be zero. Now we're looping through for our input nums. For number and nums, we start off with one. We make a check if k minus n is greater than zero in our dictionary. So does the key of four, k minus one, which is four, does that key have a value greater than zero? It's not even in our dictionary, so of course it doesn't have a value greater than zero. So instead we go in this else. We're adding our number, which is one, to our dictionary. And we're incrementing its count by one. By default, it is zero. So now we have one, one. Going back in this loop, we are now at num being two. Again, we make the same check, k minus num, that's three. Is d of three greater than zero? It's not even in our dictionary. So again, we're just adding our own number of two to our dictionary and increasing the count by one. So we've seen one, two, and one, one so far. Going back in our for loop, we have n being three and k minus three is two. So is d of two greater than zero? That is true, right? We have at least one, two. So what we're doing is now pairing it up with our number. We're incrementing that count of pairs. And since we are pairing it up with our own number, we are going to decrease this count by one. So now we have zero twos available. Going back in this for loop, we are now at number four. So K minus four is one. Is D of one greater than zero? It is. So we are able to pair them up. So our new pairs count is going to go up by one. We now have two. And D of K minus num. So D of one is now going to decrease by one. We are now using it as a pair, so we don't have any more ones available to us. And we're not adding our own number since we are pairing it up with K minus number. There's no point to add it in. It's going to be removed because it's going to be paired up anyway. So once we finish going in this if, we don't go in this else, go back in this for loop, but there are no more numbers for us to iterate over. We exit out of here and we return pairs, which is just two. And that is exactly what we were expecting. Now talking about space and time complexity for this solution. For time, we do iterate over every single number in our input. So this is going to be O of N if there are N elements in our input nums. And for space, we could potentially be storing every single element in our input nums in our dictionary. It's possible that none of them have been paired up. So they each get their own key. And this is also going to be O of N for space because our dictionary could be as big as the number of elements in our input. So we just went ahead and solved the max number of k sum pairs. If you have any questions with this whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.